Welcome to this edition of Video Drone by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to take a look at this universal upgrade kit for the X8 series of the SEMA. So, a number of you have asked me about brushless upgrades for the SEMA X8. So, I went ahead and I ordered this kit off of eBay because I thought it was rather interesting and I'll share with you why in a minute. However, uh, let's do an unboxing and take a look at what's inside here because I think this is going to be very interesting, far more interesting than I had anticipated. So, it uh, came from China and uh, pretty good shape. It took about two weeks to arrive. It wasn't on a fast boat for sure. However, it did arrive and that was good. And uh, I want to open it up here and see what's inside. And it looks like... Several other boxes are inside, as well as a guide. We'll put that aside. Who needs guides, right? So, so it appears to be three other boxes inside. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look. The boxes seem to open from the top, Joe, not the, not the sides. So there appears to be... Box one appears to be the motors, <coughs> excuse me. So let's take a look. Now, I am kind of interested in how... Uh, it looks like it takes the SEMA props, um, interestingly enough. It looks like these, these brushless motors. And these are some cute brushless motors, i got to tell you. Um, and it also comes with an adapter uh, for to mount into the SEMA housing. Let's take a quick look at that. Um, I just so happen to have a spare SEMA housing handy. And the idea is, is this sits in here, this matches the motor mounts, and this sits right in, in just like downtown the David Whitney building. You couldn't ask for much nicer than that. Then you have the outputs from the, the motors. So very, very, you know, kind of tiny motors uh, in comparison to uh, like the Up Air or the Phantom. So you have four of these motors with these adapters. And uh, that's interesting. And then what you have is ah, this is nice. Comes with a rather nice screwdriver. Now this is the replacement for the remote control. Now I don't know. Let's open it up here. If it's self-centering or not. Now because this has an altitude hold. These are self-centering, so this is the remote control. Now this board replaces the control board and your existing controller. Now one of the things I was curious is the, both of these are, are self-centering, so that's that's good. Um, you can see the antenna here, it's these little transmitters right there. Uh, I'm not sure that there's going to be a huge opportunity for modification unless you want to desolder this transmitter from the board. I'll have to take a closer look. Um, you got two power wires here that hook up. And looks like you got for your trim tabs and all that kind of stuff and plug into your LCD screen. So this is an interesting combo. But again, uh, doesn't look like huge opportunities for antenna upgrade. Um, but we'll have to see. I might be able to decide or something on there. Uh, and, and my point with this is it appears this can also plug into... So, so you could use either uh, the non-hovering controller or the hovering controller. Uh, and it'll self-center because it's in, in these itself. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'm pretty happy with this. And th this was sort of something that I was a little bit interested in. You know, because this whole package is about 100 bucks. And the um, a sort of interesting part about this is what could you do with this controller outside the SEMA X8? Because again, uh, with this, again, this is a complete flight system, and, and I'll sh show you the reason in a minute. Because you notice that you aren't you are changing the controller now. There is a lot of screws in here, a lot, a lot of screws. Um, this is the guy I've been waiting to see. Yeah, sort of. So it looks like the electronic speed controllers here. I want to open this up. I want to see how big uh, the electronic speed controllers are. I'm guessing probably the size of those motors are going to be smaller speed controllers. I'll try to get one out. I want to see if they're Bell Helis or... Ah, they're, they're no name. No name speed controllers. And they got a capacitor that sticks out. Uh, so, don't know. I might open one of those up later. 
and see if we can see inside. Uh, looks like more body parts. Um, oh, those are just more of the speed controllers. But I'm, I'm guessing these are smaller. Uh, this is the temperature of the heat shrink. This is the guy I was interested in. This is the piece I was most interested in when I... So, this is the new flight controller. Uh, and so it has the, mimics the, the plug-in for the SEMA camera. Um, I have to take a look at that because it's got, uh, yeah, I think it pretty much mimics it. And then, so you have the LED panels. So the LED, so this, uh, this controller will sit in here. Sort of like the other one. There's, I believe this, uh, this piece. I believe this piece somehow sits inside of here. Oops, I believe this sits in there somehow and then the controller sits on it. But let's take a closer look at the controller. Let's let's move some stuff out of the way and give you a closer look at the controller. Um, so you do replace the LEDs. It comes with the LED pieces. Uh, comes with the SEMA power connector. Now this will work with the 7.3 volts as well as the 11 volts. And that's what really caught my attention is this will also work with the 11 volt battery. Uh, and we see the antenna here, and again, looks like a real small radio transmitter here, or sorry, receiver. Not much to really work with. And again, I was looking at what the flight controller, and it all seems to be in this little box covered up by this piece. Now, this is supposed to be an altitude hold flight controller, and... This is also supposed to have a return to home. Now I'm assuming it's a compass based return to home, so it simply reverses its direction. Um, and then obviously your motors plug in here. So there isn't, uh, what I was actually kind of hoping for is the, um, it had auxiliary inputs that they used the standard flight board for it, and it, you, you could modify it. And it does not look like that. It all, all looks custom. I don't see. Um, Got some Chinese stuff on here and that kind of stuff, but I don't see too much. Don't see too much. So, in short, these uh, these speed controllers plug in there, and so in other words, what what something like this would look like is, whoop! I don't throw, throw things around. Is the LEDs would snap in here, motors go in here, and then. Um, electronic speed controllers up there and into there. So something like this would be a rough, rough layout of the setup. So one of the things I was hoping is that, um, and I might still experiment with it on on the uh, S500, is I was maybe looking for this as a cheap controller for the S500 uh, because it does work with an 11 volt battery. So what I was thinking that I could use this. Now you could probably also adapt this because again put larger speed controllers um, but the but here is I don't think you can really modify this because one of the things I was thinking is you well you probably could but you'd have to do some pretty good modifications uh, because what's what's odd about this whole configuration is you notice that the the leads where it plugs in here so this must be the signal the, the white cable must be the signal and it's pulling power so it must share a power bus from the board to power the motors as well as the um, speed controller so it's pretty much integrated here I was hoping maybe that uh, uh, we could add, uh, you know, s different EC, you know, electronic speed controllers. I always have a problem with the e ECS's uh, terminology, but um, does not look like that without some work. <clears throat> Excuse me, getting all choked up about it. Uh, because again, these are going to plug in here sort of like this. And um, I don't think you could probably sync a bigger uh, ECU on there. What you could probably do is still run the ground and then run the hot and another ground uh, to the battery unit so you'd have signal ground 
you'd have signal ground and then hot going to the battery and then uh, split the signal ground to have an actual ground and then uh, maybe work it from there do something like that I don't know I'm only guessing guessing aloud um, but this is what it looks like guys so if you're curious you want to upgrade your SEMA X8 um, this could be an interesting project I'll let you guys know how it goes um, you know because I'll go ahead and do the assembly and then um, take it for a couple flights and see how it works I'm really interested in how this re the return to home function works on it um, oh let's take a quick look at what instructions come with it too you guys are probably interested in that uh, also I have links below to this where I got this um, instructions look rather nice uh, seems to be all one-sided it is in English turn power switch off a um, it does show does show on this side it does make sure I get it in frame here on this side it talks about the controller how to how to install the remote controller components on this side it shows how to do the uh, copter side of things and install all the pieces um, not bad instructions actually for something like this um, I would classify this probably as an intermediate because there's really no soldering I don't see any soldering here um, you know, again, they have the small plug connectors on here. These are smaller uh, brushless motors, so just be aware of that. Uh, but I think they'll definitely be more than uh, what you get out of um, uh, the uh, SEMA motors themselves, is what I'm trying to say. I'm just trying to look at this, too, and see all this stuff. So anyways, definitely looks interesting. If you got any questions about this kit, hit me up below. Um, I'll try to answer them as I go through this build. Also, I'll have a link for this below if you're interested in buying this and upgrading your SEMA. Uh, for 100 bucks, and if you got the, the uh, body to get a brushless copter, it doesn't look too bad. Again, I'm really interested in what the return to home looks like on this with the compass base and not GPS. I was hoping that it had some sort of knockoff standardized flight controller so we could add GPS. It does not look like it from here, um, but it does have altitude hold. So, you know, all in all, not bad. And especially if you pick up maybe a used X8 off of eBay or something like that, um, or the shell. Or you can go ahead, I think, you know, because I purchased this shell for like 15 bucks. Um, and you don't need too much more other than the shell. And I got the, I think, additional plastic pieces and legs. And so it might have been all the 20, 25 bucks. I had the controller for my other one, which flew away. So you could actually build, and that, that's what I intend on doing, build my own SEMA X8 clone for probably cheaper than what you could buy it. And especially you can get the controllers for anywhere from 14 to 20 bucks. And again, you have the new controller board over here that goes in. So hopefully you found this video interesting. If you did, uh, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe button is going to be coming up over there. Don't forget to comment below if you got questions. I will try to answer them as best of my ability. And hey, we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.